This is Iwi, which is a custom-built Northern Marine by Plum Bobs and the tape. It's 80 feet tip to tip. As she sits, weighs 285,000 pounds, has bulbous bow, 350-pound ultra anchor and 220-pound ultra anchor. The larger is hydraulic, the smaller is electric in case you were to lose hydraulics. It's got two Carlisle Finch floodlights up there. All the uh, stainless is 316, passivated to prevent rust. Every stateroom has opening ports. The master stateroom has the larger port here, which could be a way of escape if you needed to. Large window from the galley, which my wife really likes. A distinctive feature on the Northern Marines is the massive mast. All the rails around the boat are high enough so if you wash the boat, you don't have to worry about falling over. You can back up and get the rail and feel secure. It's an eight man life raft up there. This is uh, the 15 foot whaler. It's 1987 because it's less massive than a new 15 footer. You get away with it and then you pass. A lot of room on the walk around. And one thing I've appreciated with this boat is the cleats designed by Bud Lemieux for Northern Marine. The, each horn is 15 and a half inches and you have two of them. So you don't have any trouble tying up plenty of large lines. And we wanted not for glitzy furniture, but we wanted low maintenance. So the uh, furniture obviously is low maintenance. We normally have flowers on the table, but it's blowing 15 knots today. A uh, barbecue on the back deck under that canvas. It's electric. It's having been in the Coast Guard and seeing what propane can do on a boat, I did not want any propane. Over here is, uh, I think there's five stations on the boat all together. This is the uh, aft station for docking, which uh, I don't use very much. I usually use port and starboard, but this is here. And when we have strong winds in the dock, and you need to adjust the winds. The hydraulic thrusters uh, make that kind of easy to take up the slack. Plenty of storage. This hanging life jackets in here. Under the grill is storage for lines. Over on the other side is storage for uh, cleaning supplies. And I uh, don't think I mentioned the only varnish on the outside of the boat is the two poles. One for the U.S. flag and one on the bow for the urchin. boat is pretty well insulated so when you're in the salon you're not <laughs> hearing or feeling too much wind and uh, my grandkids play the piano so I put a keyboard in here which ties into the bow system sounds pretty nice coming out of the bow speakers and uh, <laughs> we have a electric fireplace and it has a 1500 watt heater um, the heat's not on now, <laughs> but you got the effect. Then we have the bar, 
with ice maker, um, wine chiller, of course the sink. And then there's above that is pictures of Iwi in Alaska in 2018. It was launched in 17. Uh, to the left of the uh, uh, bar is uh, China Cabinet. And uh, we're always prepared to go to sea. We have lines to tie doors closed. And uh, the <coughs> this is a freezer. It's 16 cubic feet. Um, you know, they're household appliances. A um, lot of boats put in feature. Um, different refrigerators, but these refrigerators can be serviced by anyone. And when we go to sea, we tie them closed. Uh, <laughs> this shelf on the, on the galley is granite. It has sea rail or fiddle on it, so that if anything uh, spills, it's not gonna run down and it keeps things from sliding off. A picture on the wall is, uh, this is in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, uh, a couple of years ago. This is a picture of a lighthouse in Alaska. The boat, remember, was built in Anacortes, Washington. So we have cruised from Haines, Alaska, uh, to Newfoundland this past summer. Um, my wife likes to exercise more than I do. <laughs> and we have a, a bicycle back there. Instead of having an L-shaped set D, uh, put the bike there. Uh, the boat has lots of large windows. So you have really good visibility outside. <clears throat> and a lot of the boats don't have large windows. Uh, but we like to see outside. Then over here is the flip down TV. And that is also tied into the boat system. My wife, fortunately for me, likes to cook and bake. So this is pantry with slide out drawers. And she gave me dimensions of how she wanted all those to work. Electrolux refrigerator, freezer. Um, it's an electric oven, it's a double oven. And the <coughs> appliance garage, which is very nice. And my wife doesn't do too much in the engine room, and I do even less in the galley. It's, uh, it's got a large sink, which she would like to have at home. And the large window. Previous boats, this was two windows much smaller. And, but then again, when you go to larger windows, you have to have thicker glass. I can't remember the dimensions, the thickness of it, but the bigger the opening, the stronger the glass. Of course, it's got a garb dispose hall. Microwave. Full-size dishwasher. Trash compactor. Plenty of overhead cabinet space. My wife says when she's home, she the, the drawers on these, you push them in and they come out. So they won't fly open on you. When she's home, she's always pushing in. <laughs> and I observed one of the boats you know, in the winter, heat rises. So I put in this folding door in the winter time when you have heat going, it helps keep the heat in the salon and not rising up in the pilot house. Little thing, but 
I think this is one of the best pilot houses that Northern Marine ever did. And uh, so we have two stid chairs here. And then uh, on the dash, I wanted everything low. It's on the old boat. There were things overhead that's hard on the neck. So I concentrated to get everything down low. Starts here with a 65 mile standalone radar. Um, pictures throughout the boat. 92 mile radar chart plotter. Noble Tech chart plotter. Two VHFs. GPS. We have uh, three depth finders on the boat. Forward, aft, and center. Single sideband stereo, two autopilots, the uh, AP70, AP45 backup, stabilizers, which are 21 square feet each fin. Um, do not have computer operated alarms. I put the old hatter system in. Um, when something goes on, a light comes on. That's the engine monitor. Um, then we have thruster controls at all five stations. These are the Carlisle Finch uh, searchlights, switches to turn the thrusters on. And you got the two VHFs, depth finders, uh, a third uh, chart plotter, AIS. And then there's a switch over there, which I tend to forget about. But if you were to lose electronics on the engine, you can, that will bypass the electronics on the engine so you can steer. And you can start all three generators from the pilot house or the engine room. And your selection for electric is just push button either here or down at the main panel. Uh, being old, I like to have a compass. There's a Ritchie compass there. All else fails, you got the good old stuff. And the good old stuff over here is a chart plotter table or chart table. And I've got some pretty old charts, <laughs> but this is, uh, I, I put a chart down here, planning chart, depending upon where we are. Last summer, it went from uh, the Chesapeake to Newfoundland, and this goes from Florida down to Venezuela, which we're not going down there this year. We have been down there, but we're not going this year. The, the, This is our certificate going through the Panama Canal, which was a breeze with this boat because of the bow and stern, 45 horsepower hydraulic thrusters. And there's our document. And uh, we have two emergency EPIRBs on board. And the boat has, uh, our old boat, we had somebody from Canada build us a cocktail table and I had them build this table. So the wood in the boat looks like teak. It used to be in the Hatteras's, but I remember it as macaroni. It's called Macaray. And this table was custom made. And you see it has the ebony inlay on it. And then it's got the base for notebooks, which hold a lot of information for us. The uh, bunk up there is a standard double bed. And when I run the boat during the day, Sharon runs it at night. When we're not on, we use the sofa in the salon. Uh, the, all the doors have sliding glass, that's, have sliding screens. Forward to two of the guest staterooms. And myself and my stainless guy are proud of what he did with this stainless rail one piece 
turning it all around, and I think pretty good art. We call this the forward stateroom, upper lower bunk. You can lay down on the bottom bunk and see the TV. This could be a uh, cruise stateroom. Under the table is a refrigerator, freezer. On top is a microwave. My wife likes to sew. She's got her ancient heavy duty sewing machine. It's, uh, this is escape hatch from the tank alley. Remember, every compartment boat has at least two ways out. Each of the four staterooms has its own shower. Standing here, I can see some of the thermostats. Each compartment has its uh, thermostat for the oil furnace, hydronic heat, and the air conditioning. All the switches in the boat um, are dimmer switch. Aft from the forward stateroom to the port stateroom. And you can appreciate the uh, large portholes throughout the boat. They're 316 stainless hood uh, portholes. And the artwork on the bulkhead there that my wife got in Alaska from a guy that our totem poles there. This panel is the other side of the starboard stateroom and you use these two handles to pull this side off and push the other side. I'm sure we'll never need them but having been in the Coast Guard I'm safety minded. So now we're going from the pilot house down the aft stairs through the galley. Go down the stairs forward to the starboard stateroom. It's a queen size bed in here.
And if you can take a shot of the overhead here, um, you put a little pry bar in between the joints on these, it's ball and socket, so it's easy to get any panels down anywhere on the boat to get it wiring or whatever you might need to do. All right, so now we're going aft from the starboard stateroom. Into the main stateroom. Plenty of drawer space, plenty of closet space. There's a large opening porthole above that fan. Uh, we seldom run air conditioning with that porthole and that fan. master head that's a five foot shower stall with four shower heads i don't know whether i mentioned yet uh, head hunter freshwater heads throughout the boat Forward of the master stateroom is the tank alley. It's sort of the attic and basement combined. Lots of spare parts, extra high hydraulic fluid, extra oil on um, the first two tanks, the 500 each for fresh water. And the next area is 1,200 gallons of fuel on each side. All the way forward is uh, two water heaters, one just electric, the other is electric and tied into the oil furnace. And on the port, you can see the size of the mechanisms for the stabilizers, your ABT stabilizers so obviously the laundry room it's full-size washer dryer plenty of storage above and below on the side there over on this side is the main electric panel and the boat using two one or two 50 amp cords instead of a single hundred because it's too hard to deal with. Um, power one, power two, and it uh, tells you how many volts you have, how many amps you have on the shorelines and the three generators. This is DC breakers here. This is A bus, AC, D bus. Uh, AC, if you only plug into one uh, 50 amp cord, um, it automatically ties the two buses together. If you put a second cord in, it doesn't tie it. Pretty smart. So this is what Sharon says is the most important room, the engine room, has a single MTU, Series 60 Detroit, 475 horsepower, four to one reduction gear to ZF gear. And we run it mostly at 1000 RPMs, which is 7.8 knots, four gallons an hour. For backup, 
each of the 30 kW northern light generators has a hydraulic pump and if the engine hoops out on you then uh, it's sea trial one generator was accomplishing four knots two generators was accomplishing six knots and uh, so back here are the chiller units three chiller units are four and a half tons each um, also has electric backup for heat which we never use because we have the oil-fired furnace for hydronic heat. And then there's the 9kW generator. We don't use generators much because we have 12kW of inverter and those batteries are recharged by the port alternator, 140 amp on the engine. Um, the forward generator has 1100 hours on it, the F 500 hours, this little one only has 200 and some hours. Haven't said before, but the boat holds 4,400 gallons of diesel fuel. And at uh, 7.8 knots, it should have over a 6,000 mile cruising range. On the aft bulkhead here, this cylinder shape is uh, at rest stabilization, which we used once because I didn't like hearing the fins going around. Um, but the boat is very stable, weighing 140 tons. And uh, this is the hydraulic tank here. It has a hydraulic uh, water circulating pump to cool down the hydraulics. Some boats have electric, not as good. On the back of the engine here is the hydraulic pump for the engine. And that, when you run the stabilizers, that develops enough PSI. But when you're maneuvering at the dock, you need to run one of the generators so that you have enough PSI for the thrusters. We run the stabilizers very infrequently, but they are 21 square feet a piece. Back behind the little generator here is the Edson Blackwater Pump, which the boat builder called Desert Storm Pump. Um, it's Pretty sizable pump for pumping out the black water. And then the uh, white tube there, I call the Christmas tree. And I tag things so you know what they're for. Um, that's for discharge of all the seawater stuff that comes into the boat, except for engine exhaust. The engine room's air conditioned, which we don't really use, but it's uh, if you're somewhere where it's really hot and the engine room's hot, I guess that helps. We'll go into the lazarette. So the 50 amp cords come in on the starboard port side into the drum and it goes up to the first breakers, circuit breakers, and then it's going to go over to the selector panel, and you can plug on bow or stern, port or starboard, and then the power comes around to the shore voltage panel, reads the voltage coming into the boat, like here, they only have 208 volts on the dock. Beneath that box are two uh, transformers, isolation transformers that also boost the voltage up to 240. So in there at the main panel, you have 240 volts. And uh, to the left of that, 
is uh, the four 3KW Victron inverters. And they, when we're underway, we don't have to run a generator because we have such a large inverter system. And typically if we, uh, for an anchor and overnight on the inverters, the batteries have never gone down below 65%. There's 12 AD batteries behind me. Uh, and when you're dock side over to the port side there are two Victron battery chargers. We use one, second one's a spare. And if you're somewhere on 50 hertz, powered to the 60, those chargers don't care whether they're 50 or 60, and they will keep the batteries up to use your inverters so you can run the boat on 50 or 60 hertz. And below that is the Sea Recovery Water Maker. Makes 1,900 gallons a day or 70 gallons an hour. And here below is a backup water maker, Gowie made, it makes 600 gallons a day. Over top, the fuel tank, that's a 200 gallon fuel tank there. And above that is the Cabola oil-fired furnace. And that's a hydronic system throughout the boat. And it is, well, with heat, um, and hot water and it has a manifold on the main engine so when you're running the main engine you do not have to fire up the boiler it gets the heat from the engine and, uh, on the port side is the head hunter tidal wave black water treatment system so you can discharge overboard after it's treated by that system. And I think I mentioned somewhere along the line, the boat holds 4,400 gallons of fuel and uh, 400 of it is here in the Lazarette, 200 each side. And uh, one of the Northern Marines, when they went to Japan, had to have bladders on the back deck and uh, these tanks take the place of that bladder. 6,000 miles range this boat has. It's a pretty long way. And one of the good things about this is it has a lazarette door to gain access to the laz for taking stuff in and out of the engine room or for ventilation. Some boats have to have a deck, deck hatch. Um, I was impressed very many <laughs> of the new boats. You had to get the engine room through a hatch on the back deck. It's obviously is a stand up engine room. So we'll go out the port pilot house door. And the anchor system to the starboard is hydraulic, 350 pound ultra anchor, 5 8 chain. The port is 220 pound ultra anchor, half inch chain. And uh, so you got, in case you lose your hydraulics, you still can anchor with the electric windlass. Each of the hatches goes down into the chain lockers. This you should need to get in there. We have a high volume, uh, Seawater wash down nozzle that aims at the chain, take off the mud. And then I use a 
freshwater hose to rinse the chain off before it goes down in the locker. And you notice how high the ball works is in the front. So you don't need to worry too much. You got good height to keep you from falling over. Sofa here. It's wide enough to sleep out here if you wanted to. <laughs> Only blowing 20 to 30 today. <laughs> oh, me. So the, the crane will pick either tender up and put it down, port, starboard, or aft, a 3,500 pound crane. The seats up here are popping at 316 steel bases. The stids are chrome plated brass, not good to have outside. Repeat of the plotter from below, the Ferbruno plotter. Depth finders, hydraulics, a complete station. You could enclose the bridge with eyes and glass if you wanted to. Everything lines up at the top so that you could add 